Okay. Today, I want to talk about man tears. I want to talk about men who want to get a safe space to cry their eyes out. They want us to help them be, you know, to relieve the stress and everything. Now, this all came about because I was, you know, my usual travels around Facebook. I came across this post and uh, I have a slide of it that I'll put up briefly, but I have to read it to you because I want you to get the full feeling that is, is, that is imparted, the pain that Brother Man feels. I have to do this. Okay. <coughs> the world seems to cater to the bruised heart of a woman. But who helps heal the broken heart of a man? Who can he vent to without judgment of being soft or sensitive? Who can he expose his vulnerability to when his ego is bruised? Who can he cry to when he has been raised to believe that crying isn't masculine? Who can he run to besides God? Was that good? I did take drama in sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this guy, you know, first of all, let me talk about this catering to shit. Where does that fantasy come in? What woman is getting catered to? Where, is, where are they doing that at? I mean, we're trying to fight tooth and nail to keep everything that we got, you know, including our lives. I mean, it's like, you know, the abuse and the rapes and the sex trafficking, you know, kidnapping, whatever those things are. And then domestic violence and being, you know, stalked and then street harassed and laws being taken away that help protect us from perverts dressed in as women in our locker rooms and bathrooms. I mean, all kind of stuff. We have, you know, women are jockeying to keep everything that we got just to feel like we can walk up and down the street and be safe. Okay, so where's all this catering to that he's imagining that we're getting? Okay, now secondly, let's talk about this, this, you know, broken heart of a man. <laughs> The systems that we live under have all been established by men, okay? We can all know that. You know, as far as marriage was created by men, religion was created by men, government was created by men, the very idea of, you know, this whole men running shit thing was created by men to, you know, kind of boost them, their little egos and everything. So men understand that since they set up these structures, that any deviation from it that causes a man pain is his own doing. He did that to himself. Okay, men understand that. So if you're a dude and you are in a relationship with a woman and she ends up hurting you, guess what? You caused that problem. You did that. I don't know. You know, women get with a man like they picked him, right? They're happy. They're in love. They, you know, they want. They have this fantasy. Oh, you're, he's going to be with me forever. It's going to be happily ever after. We're going to have our little family. And, you know, it's going to be all joy, 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 and happy ever after. And then whatever is evidently, you know, inevident, inevitably, God, I got tongue twisted. Men will fuck it up. You start lying to her. You start cheating on her. You start wanting to hit on her. You do some other egregious shit. You don't want to work. You want to get into drugs or alcohol, you know, tricking and doing all sorts of shit. So you fuck up your relationship. Every relationship in the world that has been fucked up, a man had a hand in it. I know this for a fact. So when you have a broken heart, you did that. Whatever, you know, little machinations you did that created her wanting to leave you or not trusting you and, you know, all this stuff, you created that world for that to happen. You did that. So you think that somebody's supposed to give a fuck about you having a space to heal the heart that you brought on your broken heart that you brought on yourself? What? 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 Where are you? T oh, what? Okay, whatever. I mean... But the answer to that question is nobody gives a fuck that your heart's broken. Okay, just, just let's be real. Then let's move on down the list here. He says, who can he vent to without judgment of being soft or sensitive? Hmm. Hmm. Got me, I can't come up with anyone. Because everybody's going to think that you're soft. Okay? You don't need to be venting about shit. 
What you need to do as a man is if you have an issue, you have a problem, right? I'm a woman and even I do this. I don't start crying and whining and venting about it. I go and I create a list of possible solutions. I write the problem down, right? Okay, this is the problem. This is what I need to happen on the end. What are the possible things I can do to make this solution be the one that comes about? I, you know, I need this to happen here to resolve this issue. Okay, what, what can I do? I'll make a list, A through Z, and I'll go back to double Z if I need to. And then I'm gonna start going down that list one by one until one of those ideas that I had, you know, works. That's how you solve a problem. You don't sit around whining the fuck about it like these dudes, these two force loneliness clowns, where, you know, moaning and groaning and complaining and whining, puling for the last 20 years about the same shit. Okay, the same thing. That's venting. Okay, you just vent endlessly, but you don't actually do anything. I don't want to hear venting. I want to know what the fuck you doing to fix the problem. That's what I want to know. That's the only thing I want to hear. Everything, ah, I can't hear, I don't want to hear it. I want, I want to hear some answers, I want some solutions. What are you doing to make it better? That's what I want to hear. Anything else, I, I can't hear you. I'm just, my ears are clogged, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not listening. Okay, then he says, who can he expose his vulnerability to when his ego is bruised? Let's talk about what ego is first. You know, let's, because ain't a lot of people, you know, if you didn't take psychology, you didn't study stupid ass Sigmund Freud, you don't know about the id, the super ego, and, you know, the, all this, the ego. And you don't understand how those things play in. And I admit that I'm fuzzy because it's been a long time since I've been in school. But I do know that, remember enough to know that the ego is a figment of our imagination. What the ego is, is, is what we have told ourselves that we are. What we told ourselves that we represent. What we told ourselves is how other people see us. So when you have a man who, you know, so the ego basically, I mean, it could be based on some reality. I mean, you know, like if you go to college, you get a degree, okay, you're a college graduate. You know, and that's in your head. That's a fact. I mean, you know what I mean? But the most of the stuff that comes around, you know, people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm so much better than them. I'm so smart. You know, I'm always right. I'm this, I'm that. Okay, that's all ego-based, fab, you know, fabrications of fantasy that you are creating in, in your own head, in this world that you live in, in your own mind, where you're perfect and you like this God-like creature. Okay, so that's not real. Okay, so when you have somebody who challenges your false view of yourself which is what the ego is then and you get angry you get upset and you feel vulnerable about it well you know you just got a reality check accept it grow the fuck up and man up about it i mean what you want to be feeling you know, feeling vulnerable about some shit that you created in your own mind what see uh-uh and then you want to go and cry about it and you think that some woman wants to hear that shit? We don't want to hear that shit. We don't care about you crying. That's the bottom line. I mean, it's like you can't have it both ways. In one hand, you want to be like feeling like you're weak and you know, you can have the space and the time to cry and whine and, and be comforted and patted on your back and all this old stuff. But then on the other hand, you turn around, well, you know, I'm a lead. Men are, men are natural born leaders and we're in charge. You know, it's supposed to be that way. And you know, you need to submit to us, man, man, man. And it's like, you can't have it both ways. Either you're this thing or you're that. So you pick one and then you stay in that envelope, okay? You can't be jumping back and forth like a fish, spawning fish, you know, going, just flipping around. You can't do that. You're gonna be one or the other. You're gonna either be a man and you're not gonna cry and you're not gonna vent and you're not gonna be vulnerable because that's not what men do, or you're gonna be those things and you're gonna just admit the fact that you're just a punk ass bitch made motherfucker. I mean, it's like, not rocket science. It's just one or the other. Those are the two choices here. <sighs> okay, and then the sisters really just, really just fucked my mind all up. Because as I was looking down the list, you know, you know, he's wanting to know where he can be vulnerable and all this stuff, right? It's all these women like, you know, with your true mother. I was speechless, just, you know, that's the face I felt like. Okay. I'm still speechless. Okay, you talking about a man that you fucking. Okay, you can't be his mama. You can't mother him. That's wrong, that's wrong. That's, nah, you don't do that. Okay, you thinking about, you know, you want to be treating him like he's a child and patting him up and nurturing him and all this old stuff, right? You want to be his strength. And you, what's, she's, what's this chick say? Oh, you know, you want to be his, 
his peace. No, I don't want to be his peace. I don't want to be his peace. I want him to be the peace of the whole family. Okay, because see, that's what his role is supposed to be. If you have upset in your domain as the man, that's your job to fix it. If people underneath you, right, because you're supposed to be the leader. Remember, you want to be in the front. Okay, that means everybody behind you is depending on you. So if they have a problem, it's your job to fix it. It's not your job to whine about it and vent about it to the same person that you're telling that they need to submit to you and follow you. What? Are y'all for real? I mean, it's like I'm looking at this post, right? And I'm looking at it like this, and I'm looking at it like, and then you know you want to run back, and then you come up on it, and you look at it real close because you're trying to see if I look at this from different angles, or you know, from high, from low, is it gonna look different? Is it gonna make more sense? Didn't none of that happened? Okay, this was crazy from day one, and up until the 20 minutes later, that I finished reading everything, you know, two or three times just to make sure I really saw what I thought I saw. So, um, you know, the sisters had it wrong. Like I said, they were all like, you know, into this thing where they wanted to provide all the support and be all this peace and comfort to these grown men. And I'm like, don't hold your breath because see, and even if, you know, say you're talking about, okay, so, okay, so say you're a mother of a, you know, of a young son. Okay, he's not a man yet, he's still a child. And there may be some situations where he gets so frustrated and stuff, he doesn't know what to do with his feelings because that's what adolescents, you know, that's the, the stage of life that they're in. But they're still children, okay? So you, he might shed a few tears in frustration or confusion or anger or whatever. But as a parent, it's your job to teach him that that's an inappropriate response. And so, and you know, you put, a, you put the brakes on that shit. What too many black women do is they want to, you know, oh, they hug him and they pat him up and all that stuff, which basically encourages your son to be bitch -made. You teaching him to whine and cry. So then you have these adult men who they throw tantrums like a toddler. They don't lay down on the floor and roll around like that, but they stand up and they do this thing. They do stuff like that. They shake their hands like this, and essentially they're throwing a tantrum. And this is the stuff that you as parents have created. This is the bullshit that you encouraged in your sons. I'm telling you, a son in my, there's no way. And he would cry and start acting a fool and crying like that. I'd bop the shit out of him. And it's like, stop fucking crying before you have something to cry about. You don't sit up there crying to me about some bullshit. You fix it. You're supposed to be a goddamn man. I don't raise no little bitch made people here. You are going to be a man if it's the last thing I do. And I'm going to tell them that's, that's, that's it. You don't have a choice. And you ladies have got to stop encouraging this kind of behavior in the men in your life. And then to sit up there and talk about you're going to be a mother to the man that you fucking. No, you're confused. That's incest. You don't do that. You don't even, that thought shouldn't even be in your mind. You shouldn't even be connecting mother and man you fuck. That should not be in the same sentence. You should not have them thoughts. That's, eh, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so then dude says, you know, um, who can he cry to when he has been raised to believe that crying isn't masculine? Hmm. I can't really think of anybody. So the answer to that question is nobody because nobody cares. Nobody is, you're right, it isn't masculine, it's bitch made. And if you feel like you need to cry, what you need to do is go find an abandoned building somewhere in a neighborhood that's all busted and disgusted where nobody knows you, right? Then you get out your car, cover your car so nobody can see your license plate and go deep into the depths of that building in the dark with a flashlight and then sit down and cry in there. Okay, where the rats and maybe a couple of bums might see you, but it's nobody that you know because you really shouldn't be crying. That is not masculine. That's not manly. That's a bitch. Okay, and if you're going to be a little bitch, then you need to be one somewhere where there's no witnesses. You feel me? Okay, then when you finish, you shake that shit off, get your flashlight, and you come back out the abandoned building, pull the cover off, get back in your car, and go back home. See, so you got all the little bitch shit out your system, but there's no witnesses to it. The only one who knows is you and the bums who don't know who you are and those rats who, you know, can't talk. Okay, that's, that's the way that you would handle something like that. Um, you don't cry. You don't give your permission to cry unless it's the three things of grief, you gotten getting married, and you're seeing your baby born. Those are the three occasions that it is okay for you to cry. Anything other than that is not okay and you don't cry. You fix it if it's a problem. 
If you mad, get over it. If you frustrated, get to, to solve whatever's frustrating you. Get that person, that situation, whatever, under control. That's what you do as a man. You are decisive. You are a solutions-oriented individual. You make shit happen. You are focused on success and problem resolution. None of that is going to happen when you're sitting around crying big crocodile tears like a two-year-old. That Plus, it's not sexy at all. That That's just... just I did, you know, you want women to respect you. This, this kind of stuff you should never ever do. You should never make, you should never have your name associated with anything in public about crying. That's a bitch shit thing. That's bitchy and it's just like disgusting and it just makes you, you know, women just can't really be proud of being with a man like that. You know, so then he said, well, who can he run to besides God? That was his final thing. Who can he run to besides God? Nobody. No earthly being, you know. Now, if you have some, I mean, I guess I, mean, I guess I, you could do that. You could set up a network, you know, because there are options there. You could have some male friends who are just as, you know, bitch made as you. So y'all get together and have your pity parties and cry on each other's shoulders and go through whole boxes of Kleenexes. That's what you do. So you go find you some little bitch ass friends and you hang out with your bitch ass friends and y'all whine and cry and vent to each other. That's one solution. If you just really want to, you know, have something, you want to bounce some ideas off of somebody, you seek out an elder, someone who has been there, done that. You know, you might have somebody in your family, an old, you know, grandfather, um, if some older uncles, maybe an older brother, older cousin, you know, something like that. Sometimes some men, you know, go to seek out their pastor or an older frat brother. Um, maybe they even have a, like a corporate mentor um, or maybe they have a, you know, they go to group, like group counseling. You know, they have like those men's groups. Um, sometimes those are even in churches. I mean, there's other options, you know, for you men to seek out support from each other. But I'm telling you, that's what you need to do. That needs to stay in the circle of men, okay? That does not need to come out into the world of women. Don't you let women see you cry. Don't you do that. Unless, like I said, it's one of those three things. And I'm going to repeat so you can get it. At your wedding, you are allowed to cry because this is a joyful moment in a man's life. You are allowed to cry at the birth of your first child. You might cry for different reasons. It might not be joy. It might be because you get looking at 18 years of child support. Whatever. We're going to give you that space. You can cry there too. You can also cry if you're grieving. Your dog that you had since you was five died. Your mama died. Your daddy died. Your sister brother died. You know, something. your best friend got died. I mean, something like that. Okay, you get to cry there too. Three things in your life that you get to cry about. Anything else you cry about, you're bitch. I hate to break the news to you, you know, but that's the way it is. And please don't think that anybody really cares about your ego getting bruised. Like I said, that's a fantasy, a figment of your imagination about who you are. And because somebody, you know, does, pokes a little hole in your, your little fantasy shield that you done put up and gave you a dose of reality, I mean, th that's nothing to cry about. Just man the fuck up and deal with it. So the bottom line here for all of this stuff is, you know, no woman really gives a fuck about your man tears. You I mean, to me, though, that's an oxymoron, man and tears. I mean, they don't even belong in the same sentence, they're the same universe. You got to be a man that someone wants to look up to. You're supposed to be like the strength. I mean, you're supposed to be the one as a man who soothes the tears of your woman and your children and the you know, community as a whole by banding together with other men. We can't have y'all breaking down and whining and crying like that all the goddamn time. I mean, how do you think that, where's the security in that? How does a woman going to feel that she can depend on you to be a guide, a leader, and a protector? And your everything that happens, your ass, <laughs> crying. That's not going to work, my brothers. That's, that's not going to work. And, you know, stop with the even, don't even talk about crying anymore. Don't do that. Just if you see a brother just talking about crying, you need to like, send him a private message and tell him, motherfucker, take that shit down. Because you're just making all of us look bad. All right? Deb Cooper for survivingdating.com talking about another aspect of manhood because y'all just really don't get it. I'm signing out. I'll be back in a day or two. Now that you've seen some of the grade A content that's offered on the Debsterism channel by advice columnist and author Deborah Cooper, 
please become a subscriber. Just click the subscribe button below. Then click the little bell symbol that you'll see. By doing that, you'll be sent notifications directly to your cell phone right after new content is uploaded. So you can be one of the very first people to see the new videos and to comment on them. So please like, please subscribe, please comment, and please share a link and tell a friend. If you can do all those things, I'll love you.